gonna talk about why black women are under a mass hypnosis. And we've all gone, we've all gone through in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Now, my ex-wife, we was together about 13 years, 13 years. Throughout that time, there's a lot of things that went on that, in the back of my mind, there were red flags, but it didn't click at the time. It's a lot of gaslighting. Now, when we met, she knew who I worked at. She knew I was one of the gym dudes. Gym rat, whatever you want to call it. I did wait. That's what I do. That's what it was. So we got together. As a matter of fact, that was one of the things that attracted her to me. She said it herself. It's not just her. I knew a lot of women that were attracted to me initially for the same reason. So I wasn't surprised about it. I was used to it. And I approach women and get to talking to them. See how they look at me. And the ones that approach me on their own will look at me the same way. So I would know the reasons initially about the initial attraction and why they would show interest in the beginning. So I knew. But as the years went on, my ex-wife got together, all of a sudden. Slowly but surely, me working out with the homies was a problem, even though I was doing this well before I even knew it existed. But now it's a problem. Because, see, when we used to go out places, she would see how women would look at me and check me out. It didn't matter when I was with her, and I wasn't even entertaining with other women. It's like she would get mad at me for the actions of other women. Just on the street with me, just being me and minding my own business. Somehow, because they're attracted to me, it's my fault. See how this, see how it goes, folks? Notice a pattern? Because it's not just my ex wife that does this, black women as a whole. Historically, have done this, and it's even worse in the modern day era that we live in now. So, these red flags, I should have been attentive to, but that was my mistake at the time. I didn't. And we proceeded on as we were getting married. And over time, things got progressively worse for basically the same reasons. So, now all of a sudden, She wants to accuse me of cheating. And that, that's usually like the genesis of all our arguments. We find out the fuck what the hell it is. That's why you have to ask the bitch what she said. Oh, why don't you go ask that other bitch? And the other bitch is like, you have that other bitch who took the bitch. Silly gas like that. This would go on for years. Mental and emotional abuse. And when you bring this up to them, they act like they don't know what you're talking about. They have no earthly idea the language that you speak of. I'm not doing that. I don't know what you're talking about. Because nothing is ever their fault. It's always your fault. So if they feel a certain way, you have to have have something to do with it. It's not because maybe they have mental illness and they have some unresolved issues from their childhood or their teen or their teenage years and their young adulthood that they need to deal with. No. It can't possibly be that. It has to be your fault because in their mind they're perfect. And when you call them out on that, like, oh oh, I guess you perfect then. I guess you're looking for the perfect man. And 
make some more mistakes. So that because you yourself are hurt. We hit them with that other foot. All of a sudden, they want to throw the other foot. No, 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 As an adult, as a responsible adult, you should be able to take inventory of the things that you need to work on as far as yourself. What do you have to work on when it comes to relationships and marriages and things like that? Because logically speaking, you know, as a human being, it's not possible for you to do everything specifically perfect to what your partner likes and enjoys there's going to be some things and some conversations that they're not going to like they're going to disagree with that's the natural uh that's the natural way of life it's, it's, it's natural these things happen so a lot of a lot of these women will ask you well, well what am i doing wrong And they actually believe they never do or say anything wrong. Everything they do is perfect. Everything they do is great. And they can't possibly be held accountable because they've done nothing wrong in the first place. Any friction and arguments and disagreements and the, nece the, nece the necessary environment of no, you, you haven't created an environment of cooling off. You need a cooling off period. Because you guys are not seeing eye to eye in that in that conversation. So you need a cooling off period. And whatever created the need for that cooling off period, these women, or these black women especially, they will blame the need for the cooling off period on you. It's never their fault, according to them. See, as a man going through life, we know our shortcomings, things that we need to work on to better ourselves. We constantly take inventory of ourselves, how we think, how we move in life, how we do business, how we choose or choose not to do business in certain situations. We always take an inventories of our life. What can we do to better our personalities, our attitudes, our environment? What, what can we do to create a less stressful life for ourselves? Any uh, situations of disagreements and relationships and marriages that we've had, we had the ability to sit down and think like, okay, what could I have done to create a better situation? Is there anything I'm forgetting? Did I neglect something that I should have known better to? Because normally I wouldn't, but at the time maybe it was a lap, you know, a lapse in judgment. We tend to do these, we tend to do these things automatically. It's, just, it's natural for men to hold ourselves accountable and want to make situations better problem solvers. We naturally want to solve problems. But a lot of these women, the black women, their solution to the problems, see they soft. They're mentally soft. So it's easy for them to be placed under a mass hypnosis. This is why they all say the same dumb shit. Oh your mama black. Any criticism of a black woman, oh your mama black. Well, maybe I wouldn't date my mama either. How about that? Maybe your messed up personality is what's need to be addressed here. And your narcissistic thought process that you never do anything wrong or say anything wrong is never your fault. Your lack of communicating. And then when you accuse black women of not being very good communicators, they try to turn the whole scenario around for you. Well, you 
don't communicate that way. No. You don't listen. You don't pay attention. You hear what a man is saying only because you're looking for the break in his statement so that you can jump in and respond. You're not trying, you're not listening to understand. You're hearing to respond. That is a difference, it's a big difference. And this is why a lot of things fall apart. And when me and my ex-wife finally got divorced, it wasn't that year, it wasn't even the next year, it wasn't even the year after that. Well, let me take that back. It might have been three years after we got divorced. Three years after we got divorced. She finally openly admitted that she cheated on me. But even though I couldn't prove it, I already knew it. I already thought it in the back of my mind. Like, she going awfully hard to accuse me of cheating with no proof whatsoever. Even to the point where she would resort to accusing me of doing something that I've always done and was doing when we met. I would have two, two and a half hour, even three hour sessions on a weekend working out with my homie. Working on chess. There's so much to do on chess in Genesis. You need more time. When you're working out with somebody, y'all taking turns, so of course it takes longer. And at the time, he was living on the south side of Chicago and I was living in Hoffman Estates. If you're familiar with Illinois, you know how far apart these places are. You would meet, sometimes I would drive all the way to Evanston or something. And we would meet there. Evanston is on the lake by Northwestern, right by the north side of Chicago. And we would meet there. And that's close to like 45 minutes. Depending on traffic, it might be an hour drive. So travel time, and then working out a long time, and then traveling back home, obviously it takes up a lot of time. It took up most of my Saturday. And it didn't matter that it was time, like during the wait, during the workout, that we would FaceTime or I'll talk to her on the phone. And you can literally hear, at the time the gym had like the metal, as far as the freeways go, a lot of it was metal. A lot of the plates were metal. So you can hear the clanking of the plates. Because she used to work out a little bit too, so she knows what that sounds like. But no, that wasn't enough. No, that wasn't enough. Because when you come with logic and proof, these black women don't want to hear that. Because in their mind, they are perfect. And you should be subservient to them. You should be a servant to them. You should worship the ground they're walking on. Whatever they say must be true in their mind. Because if they said it, it don't matter how nonsensical it is. They don't care. They don't care if it's nonsensical. Because they feel a certain way. So because they feel that way, it must be true. And a lot of us make the mistake of coming to those disagreements and those arguments with logic. When at the moment, the woman is swimming in a river of feelings. You can't win that. You can't prove your point in that situation. Because they're not hearing you. They're not, they're not listening. They hear you, but they're not listening. We've all fell victim to that at one point in time or another. The good thing about it is, in those moments, we start to see things a lot more clearly. And oftentimes, that's all we need. To get some clarity in our lives. Because we often ask ourselves in the moments that we're alone, like, you know, if there's 
something that I should be doing and I'm not doing. Yeah, the sun. Whatever higher power you believe in, it's in to ask these questions. And you can get these answers from right before or at night when you feel yourself right. When you're about to fall asleep at that moment that you feel yourself drifting, drifting off to Mr. Sandman, I love you. Ask yourself a question that you want to answer. And then just leave it there. Don't say nothing else. Just fall asleep. And keep doing that until the answer, sooner or later, the answer is going to come. It's probably going to come to you in a dream. It's going to be somewhere in your dream. Answer to your question. A lot of times, guys, we do that. Sometimes we get answers that we're not prepared to hear. We're not prepared to know, or we're not ready to know the answer to the question. But we're bold enough to know that we want to hear it anyway. Women don't do that because they think they know everything. You look at these snuffy turds walking around with stupid ass eyelashes. It don't matter how many men say, you know what, that shit looks stupid and it is not attractive. They don't care. In their mind, there's something wrong with you. And it's not just a few, one or two, or a few black women that think this way. There's a whole legion of these snuffy turds walking around thinking the same way. That's how you know they must be under a man's hypnosis. Just like what happens with my ex-wife. So you couldn't, you couldn't prove that I was cheating because I didn't. Even though I could have, I had plenty of opportunities. I wanted to find out later that maybe I should have. but only for me to find out that, oh, oh, okay, so this is why you wanted to believe and you wanted it to be true so bad that, oh, he cheated. Instead of turning down the times that I could have, I probably should have, since it turned out that I wasted my time anyway. You see, fellas, I say all that to say this. With black women being under this mass hypnosis, they are literally out there wasting your time. And you don't have time to waste. Time is money. Don't be afraid of the red pill. Don't be afraid of living a MGTOW life if that is what will directly benefit you at this moment. There's nothing wrong with that. If you want to do the pump and dump thing, hey, go for it. But I definitely understand how they in this environment. None of these women, none of these black women want to be wise. They can say they do, but their actions say something completely different. They don't know how to maintain a relationship. Half of them don't even know how to communicate correctly like an adult. They would rather text you. And I have a problem with texting. But when it comes to discussing something important, you should talk to you should talk to the person face to face. Or at least call the person on the phone and speak in real time. So so you guys can can communicate and react in real time. That way you can hash out and fix anything that's troubling either one of you, like right then and there. That's how adults would do it. You got a lot of women, a lot of black women out here. They don't believe in that. They are incapable of communicating like an adult. They would rather text back and forth and you know how easy text can be misinterpreted. 
nothing can be nothing important can be fixed and resolved through text you see a lot of these black women will resort to that because they are too much of a coward to communicate effectively in person they communicate like children this is what the mass hypnosis has done to them it seems like it's shrunk their brain to the size of a lima bean And they wonder why nobody wants to marry them. Well, what did you expect? Marriage is for adults. Adults that know how to communicate with each other. Not someone, not a child in an adult body who just looking for somebody else to blame if a relationship doesn't work. Black women are very bad at relationships because there's no room for you in the relationship or the marriage because their ego is taking up two spaces there's no room for you you don't fit in dysfunctional households and even the ones that may not come from a dysfunctional household they create their own dysfunction in their lives because they're addicted to drama they can't help it it's second nature they don't want a relationship that's harmonious they don't want a stress free relationship because to them that's that's boring they would rather create an environment that gives the man high blood pressure, high potential, a whole bunch of health problems because they get off of it. And it's not just one, two, or just the masses of black men. This is why I say they must be stuck under a hypnosis because they all read from the same book of nonsense. They all say, they all pair the same. Same talking point, same, same crap. And it's never their fault, it's always your fault. And you can tell when they want some BS. So let's say, Men burp, men fart sometimes. That's the way it is. So if you happen to eat something, eat a nice burger with some onions or whatever on it, or a taco with some beans or something, kind of gassy, you know, you're talking, the burp slips out or whatever, whatever. gets mad at that talking about oh that's disrespectful and things like that no you're not fooling anybody that's not what you're really mad about you're looking for a scapegoat because you're probably already doing something behind the scenes that you think or you hope your man don't know about because then that'll make that'll destroy your little persona See, that's what a lot of black women want. They want to put the persona out as being a black, a good black woman when they don't even have the capability of being such a thing. I can see right through that fake persona. And women could cheat up and down and guy probably would never even know. A lot of these black women would take these cheatful, deceitful, promiscuous secrets to the grave because that's how they are. They all operate the same way. 
and we all have the same excuses, the same talking points, the same actions, the same thought process. They like the same things. They like most of the same music. They have mostly the same idols. Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, stripper culture. This is what they follow. This is what they idolize. This is what they pedestalize. And it don't matter how much they say they don't. They are being subconsciously programmed to operate this way. And this is why the black community is in shambles. Black women are the least married and the least desired to be dated. Because nobody wants to put up with that crap. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You expect somebody to be a dancing monkey for you so that you can be entertained. And if you're not entertained, then you don't start up some nonsense behind some BS logic. Oh, you fired an or you burned. God, it's disrespectful. Let me see. Why don't you be an adult and say what it is? If you don't want the guy, go be with somebody else. Don't be passive aggressive about it. But they can't do that because that will require being an adult and thinking like an adult. And a modern day black woman does not want to do that. Doesn't matter how much it would benefit them. This is a race of women who are hell bent on going against their own self interest. And then when everything falls apart, they're sitting there looking stupid and complaining about things falling apart. Why did this happen to me? It happened to you because you deserve it. You put that energy out there. You did this to yourselves. And now the chickens have come home to roost. This mass hypnosis that y'all are under will destroy y'all. And in the end, all of you would have deserved it.